Hello, in this video, I'll show you what to do always after doing the screen retouching when it comes to Photoshop. So this is going to be about the techniques that you can use to enhance your image after doing the screen retouching. So oftentimes we do the screen retouching perfectly, but the images tend to look a little bit boring after we have saved them. So this is going to be a video to show you how you can spice up the images after doing screen retouching. So you can see I'm done retouching this very image. You can see before and after, before, after. Once I'm done retouching the image, this is what I tend to do in order to spice up the image. So the very first thing I tend to do is simply adding shape or dimension to this very image using dodging and burning. So I'll show you how to do dodging and burning easily and quickly when it comes to Photoshop. So I'll just come to the adjustments and come to the curves adjustment layer. Then after coming to the curves, come to this icon or this pointer in the middle of the curves. Click in the middle and drag up to brighten up the image slightly. Then with this white layer mask selected, press Ctrl I. Or you can use Command I on the keyboard to invert the effect. Rename that to Dodge. Then do the same to darken the image. Once again, come to Curves and click in the middle and drag down to darken. And press Ctrl I or you can use Command I on the keyboard. And you can rename this to Burn. So to dodge and burn, you basically want to enhance the highlights and the shadows. In the image so as you can create shape or dimension on the subject's face or body so select both layers and put them in a group Se select both layers then press ctrl g or you can use command g on the keyboard to group these layers and you can name this to d and b for dodging and burning so after renaming this open up the group and select the dodge layer remember dodging is for the highlight so just select the dodge layer mask then simply come the brushes and get the brush tool. And for a settings, make sure it is the soft round brush. The mode is normal opacity and the flow at 100%. Then after doing this, simply come and make sure you have black and white on these two color swatches. In case you don't have black and white on the two color swatches, click on the tiny swatches right here. Or simply press D on the keyboard. And after doing that, make sure white is the top color. You can switch between black and white by using the arrow. So after doing that, simply... Reduce on the size of the brush by using the bracket keys on the keyboard, the square bracket keys on the keyboard, and draw over the areas that you feel should be having highlights. So for this, I'm just going to draw lines over every area I feel should be having highlights, just like that. Simple lines, and for the forehead area, I'll just draw those lines like that, even on the chin. So for, for whichever area that is meant to have highlights, just draw lines, and click on the band one and simply draw line so for the nose i'll just draw in this up and down direction and i'll just come right here and simply enhance this area and can as well enhance this given area and also this dark area so once you're done doing this you can even do this for the body but i'll just do it for the face so now to blend these lines into the image come and make sure the mask is selected and come to feathering and you click and move this forward like that just move that forward and when the black the lines are blending into the skin and do the same for the dodge layer and move this forward and stop when the lines are blending or blending well into the skin so you can see the before and after before after you have created shape or dimension to the model skin so you can as well have control over this in case you have overdone the dodging or the burning by reducing on the opacity so you can see i've made or created shape or dimension like i said you can as well reduce on the overall opacity for the dodging and burning so this is one thing that you can use to make your photos better after doing the skin retouching and the next step is simply what you can do is to do eye and teeth whitening so you can see the eyes are having this kind of yellow look so let me just zoom in so now to do eye whitening for this, you're just going to come to adjustments, come to hue and saturation. Make sure master is selected and come to the saturation and simply take down the overall saturation up around negative 66 or negative 68. With this selected, press Ctrl I on the keyboard or you can use Command I on the keyboard to invert the effect. Get the brush tool, make sure white is the top color, opacity and flow at 100%. And simply reduce on the size by using the bracket keys on the keyboard. And simply paint on what you feel is meant to be white in the model's eyes to whiten the eyes better and 
in a more natural way. So just do that. Make sure you don't paint on the corner of the eye, just like that. You can see the before, after, and you can as well reduce on the opacity in case you overdo the eye whitening effect. So that is the second thing you, that you can do to make your photos better when it comes to Photoshop after doing the skin retouching. The third thing that you can do to make your image better after doing the skin retouching is simply coming to the colors of the skin so that you can make them better. So you can say the skin tone is leaning more towards the yellow or orange side. So what you have to do, simply come to adjustments and create a black and white adjustment layer. Change its blend mode from normal to multiply. And that is going to darken the overall image, come the opacity and reduce on the overall opacity to around, let's go with around 12, 12 looks, okay. Then after that, just come to adjustments, come to hue and saturation, click on master, select the reds and simply come to where you see the lightness and take down the lightness just like that. And this is going to reduce on the overall orange color or orange tone from the skin. You can see before, after, before, after. So when you do this, sometimes it's going to make the overall image slightly dark. So what you can do to make the photo pop, simply come to adjustments and simply come to the levels adjustment layer. Then under the adjustments, simply hold down the option key on the keyboard. Or you can hold down the alternate key on the keyboard, option for Mac, and click on this black pointer. Move this forward until when you are just starting to see the blacks in the image just like that and do the same for the white point click and you you drag this out until when you're starting to see the whites appear in the image and this is going to make the overall image pop you can see the before after before and after once you're done doing this you can as well play around with the blacks in the image by simply coming Adjustments come to selective color and simply come to the blacks or whichever color that you want to manipulate. So for this, I'm just going to move the sign slider forward slightly and can simply intensify on the black slightly of the image. You can see before, after, before, after. Lastly, you can add skin glow or skin shine by coming to adjustments and simply come to the curves adjustment layer and simply come to this pointer, drag it from the right to the left hand side until when the image is slightly brighter then double click on this curves layer and come to the layer style dialog box and make sure the blend if you set to gray come to where you see underlying layer and simply click on these pointers and drag them from the shadow area so you're just going to drag them and stop at that point whereby only the bright areas on the skin are now being shown or being affected Hold on the option key on the keyboard or the alternate key on the keyboard and split this pointer until when the effect is blending well into the skin. Just come and click OK. Click on this white layer mask and press Ctrl I on the keyboard or you can use Command I on the keyboard to invert the effect with the brush tool selected. Make sure white is the top color, opacity and flow at 100%. Simply increase on the size of the brush by using the square bracket keys on the keyboard and paint only on the bright areas of the subjective skin to add that kind of glow or skin shine on the model skin. So sometimes it may look a little bit overdone. Come the opacity and reduce on the opacity of the overall effect. You can say before, after, before, after. In case it's too much, reduce on the overall opacity. So let's see what we have been able to do on this image after doing the skin retouching. And you, I want to show you how we have been able to transform this very image. So I'll just group everything that we have done and put them in a group. Then I show you the overall before and after how we have been able to transform the image after doing the skin retouching. So this is the image straight after doing the skin retouching. And this is the image after the simple adjustments that we just made to it the before, after, before, after, before and after. So this is how you can transform and make, make the image better after doing the skin retouching in Photoshop to make it stand out and look better. Finally, you have to save the image. So in order to save the image the best way, simply come to File, Export, come to Export As, and it's going to open up this Export As window. Under Format, make sure it is set to JPEG. Quality set the maximum, which is 7 for this case. And make sure the sample is set to by Cubic Sharper because we want a very sharp image 
After doing this, measure the color space set to convert sRGB and embed color profile have been checked and click on export and you can save the image in whatever location that you wish to. So this is how you can simply transform and make your photos better after doing skin retouching in Photoshop. I hope you have benefited from this video. Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in yet more videos on this channel. Don't forget to keep practicing and as well keep creating.